What's going on guys? Welcome once again to another tutorial. Today we're having a look at swipes on the device and also not on the device. We're doing it for both standalone and mobile. So that's what we'll be doing today. Now remember, as always, if you don't want to write all the code that you see today, you can go in the second link down there in the description down below and you can go directly on the website, download section and download the script directly from there. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, guys, so we got quite an easy one today. I'm not going to put in the code incrementally. We're going to just throw everything out there and show you how it works. So let's go right in the engine right now. We've got a scene that has the swipe script on top of it and also a swipe input test. Now, the swipe input will take in a dead zone. So how far do you have to drag your finger across from where you started for it to be considered a drag? And also the double tap delta, which is how long do you wait in between um, to tap to be considered a double tap. So without further ado, let's actually run this in the game. I have this on my remote in the real life. So if I show you that over here, we're gonna have our nice screen. Uh, this is just for touch input. So you can have a look at what you get in the console using this. So let me point towards this phone. Okay, so let's have a look down there in the console down below. So if I tap, we get a single tap. If I double tap, we get two tap and then a double tap of course to confirm that we've did it fast enough. Now if I do it slowly, so one tap, another one, we don't get a double tap, that was too slow. Let's clear this out and try out the swipes. This is a swipe up, swipe down, left, and then right. And if I do a diagonal one, uh, it's gonna go with whichever is the strongest one. So whichever I had the uh, strongest influence in. So that is what we're gonna be having a look today. So like I said, it's already done. Let's just quickly go through the script together. So at the very top over here, I have an instance, so I can call it from anywhere, like we do most of the time. Um, and then we have our tweaks. The two field we had a look at in our in our um, inspector a moment ago. And then we need a couple of things. We need a couple of logic fields. So you see all of these. These are the Boolean that will be called um, every single frame on another object to know whether, okay, so this is a swipe up, down, you know, to know if those key are pressed. Just think of those as key press for now. And then the rest is just for logic. We use a square dead zone, not just a dead zone, so we can um, avoid using magnitude every frame. So just like it's written down here, we use square magnitude instead of magnitude. And the reason we can do that is because we have this field. Um, in between those two are the public properties. So this is what will be called from outside. We'll do a swipe input dot instance dot tap to know whether or not um, the phone has been tapped during this frame. Now, because this behave as the input system on its own, um, I have to update every frame. So every single frame, we reset our input, we put them back on false. So nothing has been pressed every single frame at the beginning, and then we check whether or not they are. So right after that, I branch it to update standalone or update mobile. Those are different. Um, if we have a quick look over here, the standalone uses input the get mouse button. So all the get mouse function, and then the mobile he um, he uses input that touches, so it's a lot, well, it's very similar, but they use different um, input system. So let's have a look at the beginning. So we start right away by just checking, is the mouse button down? If so, well, that's a tap. And then we start recording the position of that tap. And then we check whether or not this was a double tap by checking with the current time minus last tap time. So this is say the last tap was five seconds ago. This would be um, time dot time minus five which would lead you to know whether or not you're in the double tap timing. So if it is, well, it's gonna turn that into a true Boolean, um, which you'll be able to access from outside using this property. Having that said, uh, we then set the last tap time so we know when was the last time we tapped on our device. Now, if we're releasing a tap, we're just resetting the value. So this is a get mouse button up. Right after that, we start tracing down the distance in between our start touch and where we are right now. So we reset that and then we have a look at it. So if start touch is not equal to zero, so if we're actually pressing somewhere right now and we still haven't let go of the get mouse button up, oh, sorry, get mouse button. So we haven't let go of our finger, then we're going to take those two vector and give yourself a delta in between the two. So current position minus where we started. And then we can check, okay, so how big is this vector? If it's bigger than our dead zone, it means we have a confirmed swipe. Um, and if we do, well, we just have to find which direction the swipe was in. So we take those two values and we do an absolute to know whether or not we were left or right, and then up or down. 
and then um, depending on which one it was, I set that one to true, and then we exit and reset those values so we don't have two swipes. So if we're going top right, and we're going a little bit more right than top, then we're going to trigger swipe right, but then if we keep on going, we're not going to trigger swipe up. And that's something that was important for me in my game. Um, and that's it, that's what we do if you have a standalone. Now for mobile, it's the same exact thing. I'll let you have a look at the code. Um, the only thing that's different is really, instead of using um, mouse position, you're using input touches, the first one, dot position, and then you're using phases to know whether or not you're beginning your touch or you're ending it. So those were the equivalent of get mouse button down and also get mouse button up. Once again, I'd like to remind everybody that this package is available on the website, so you can go over to the second link in the description down below and download it from there. Other than that, please subscribe to the channel, um, like the video, and of course, share this with your friends so we can grow and make more videos like this and help you guys um, make code and give you code, basically. Thank you so much for watching once again, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.